Hi, I'm Jeremy Green. I'm a professor in the Department of the History of Medicine here at Johns Hopkins University. And I'd like to take you inside of the Johns Hopkins Hospital. Specifically, I'm standing here inside of the dome of the original hospital building, which opened its doors in 1889. And if you look behind me at this complex infrastructure, you can get a sense of the metal that underpinned the building, and hidden in the walls was a structure of pipes and air shafts that its original designer, John Shaw Billings, envisioned as a revolutionary new approach to the hospital as a machine for healing. Now, it may seem unusual to focus on ventilation shafts as a key technology in the history of the modern hospital, especially in a building that now houses cyclotrons, PET scanners, and robotic surgical assistants. But by studying Billings' original blueprints, some of which have been digitized by our archivists, we can trace the processes by which the hospital shifts from a place of last resort in the early 19th century to the central institution of healthcare in the 20th and 21st centuries. We can also better understand how, in the United States, we effectively built our public health system around big hospital complexes like this one, with many good consequences, including the development of new and previously unavailable life-sustaining therapies, but also with many unanticipated results as well. For example, the attic spaces tucked just under the dome became favorite sleeping spots for tired hospital residents. Eventually, this space was transformed into a handball court, while this other space came to house parts of the telephone system as electronic communications became newly necessary to the growing hospital. These uses for these spaces were not anticipated by the original architects. And in ways that could not have been anticipated in 1889, building a public health system around hospitals and private practitioners has led to a number of ethical, economic, and logistical challenges we now face in the 21st century, inheriting a healthcare system that requires more than 17% of the U.S. gross domestic product to function. In this online course, Biomedicine and Its Consequences, we explore how studying the biography of a building like this can help us better understand the development of our complex healthcare system, for better and for worse, and understand also some of the paths not taken along the way. I love teaching here in the historical buildings of the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. They form a warm and rich environment, well suited for exploring the past and its relevance to the practice of medicine in the present. This course, too, will work to develop an intimate environment, a class size of no more than 15 students a term. We'll work together to refine our skills of historical analysis. But this course will be taught outside of the confines of these buildings. I mean this literally. As a student body, you will be scattered across the nation, if not the globe. But I also mean this in a broader sense. When we look at the history of medicine, we will look beyond the kind of knowledge generated in the Johns Hopkins Hospital to include many different sources and approaches to health and healing in the 19th, 20th, and 21st centuries. Nor is this a course about how we got to be so smart compared with people of a few generations ago. We want to treat the past with some respect and understand it as a repository of ideas and practices about health and the body very different from those that we hold in the present day. So, for example, we will be studying the changing epidemiology and social meanings of disease. For example, how public health infrastructure began to pivot from a burden of disease driven largely by acute infectious diseases to one driven largely by chronic, non-communicable diseases, and the different kinds of institutions that were produced as people organized responses to these and other threats to health. Much of this work was not done by doctors at all, but by public health workers, nurses, alternative healers, insurance and pharmaceutical companies, and everyday citizens in the context of their own homes. Since the management of health happens in such a wide variety of places and in the hands of such a diverse group of actors, we will be equally broad in our use of cases, examples, and sources for this class. Over the next eight weeks, we're going to use the tools of historical analysis to understand the formation of biomedical knowledge, institutions, and practices from the late 19th century to the present day. Historical investigation offers us powerful glimpses into what it was like to live at a very different moment in time, and also a remarkable tool for understanding the complexity of the structures that we now inhabit in the present day. Over the next several weeks, I look forward to working with you to better understand the content and process 
of historical investigation in medicine. Any questions, please just shoot me an email. I look forward to seeing you in class.